Well, I guess it's been over 30 years now. Nevertheless, I was uh, called to go to right outside of Tokyo to a military base and uh, flying coach economy class. That was the tickets they purchased for me. Flying from New York, it's about 13 hours of misery. <laughs> After a few hours of close quarters in those little old narrow seats, it became very tiring. Upon arrival, I learned that they had lost all of my luggage. So for over a week, I had to make do with the clothes I had on my back. And every night I had to wash them to be ready for the next day's meeting. I didn't understand how per diem worked and how that I could have went down to wherever I was and got some money for my clothes. But they gave me some money, but there wasn't nobody over there in Japan this big. I'm, I'm telling you, it was just quite, it was just quite, an, it was quite an ordeal. But uh, when it came time to return home, the airline that I had been on, I believe at that time was called Pan Am. Pan Am upgraded me to first class on my return flight. I have flown many places throughout the world. And just getting there is exciting. You know, just going places is exciting. But what's even more rewarding, and that is when you're tired and weary, and you know you're finally going home. There's something about going home. Going home is enough even if you have to ride in a cargo bay. But then someone walks up to you and says, only this time you're not flying coach. This time you're not flying economy class. You're not going to ride in little bitty seats on the way home. This time you're going home first class. Come on, everybody say first class. Nudge somebody close by and say, first class. Hear me now. When we walk through that door of that plane, don't even, don't even go back there to where you have been. Don't even look for those little seats anymore. Turn left. Go to the first class section. I don't know if you know this or not, but in the front section of those 747s, they're on the front row. There's another world. It's completely different than back there behind them curtains. Up there in the front, it's all together first class. As I walked in, a beautiful lady greeted me by my name. I don't know how she knew my name, but she said, Mr. Ward. I'm into this now. In first class, they call you Mr. She escorted me over to an area that had one seat in one row. There wasn't rows of seats. It's just one seat there. There wasn't anybody beside it. There's enough room you can walk around the seat if you want. You could have a Jericho march right there around that seat. <laughs> she motioned for me to be seated. So I sat down and she brought a warm blanket, covered me up. 
I think some of that had to do with my odor, but anyway. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth, you know. Six days on the road and I'm going to make it home tonight, you know. She covered me up with a warm blanket. And well, like she got me all, she tucked me in just like Mama did. And uh, she got me tucked in. She brought a bottle of wine over and a stem glass on a tray and asked me if I wanted some wine. And she said, if there's anything you need, Mr. Ward, you just let me know. She remained in my section all the time I was going home. She was there all that. To, she was there to help me. I planned on I planned on having a long conversation with her. But uh, something put me to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not admitting nothing. It ain't none of your business. I'm just telling you, I went to sleep quick. I slept all, I slept for 13 hours. Now you shut up, chopper. I don't, I don't think y'all got the full meaning of first class. I'm flying first class. And, uh, When we got to getting into New York, the plane started descending. Now, honey, they'd never know if it was San Francisco if you hadn't have said something. They'd all, I mean, it don't matter if it's New York or San Francisco or Lone Oak. Long way around, wasn't it? Was it San Francisco? All right, we're getting into San Francisco. I could have a successful ministry from them two people right there. So they brought me this, they brought me this warm washcloth. This pretty woman did. I mean, last time I saw her was in Tokyo. <laughs> and uh, brought me this warm rag. She said, that's for, your, that's for refreshing. And so she said, just wash your face with it, you know. So I took this warm cloth and I was rubbing my face with it. She said, wash your hands with it. It's just kind of freshening you up for getting on. I thought, man, this is first class up here. Another time, my wife and I, we had been to Israel. And uh, now, honey, you let me tell this, okay? <laughs> We've been to Israel. And we were returning this time to New York, not San Francisco. <laughs> and we were so tired from the long trip in them buddy seats. We're fly, flying economy. And we're so tired from the long flight. And this time the flight was over 11 hours long. And uh, we got out of the plane and we went to catch our flight. We found out that we we're going to have a, an 11 hour layover. I'm tired. I want to go home again. Something about going home. So I went over to the service desk. And I asked the lady there at the service desk, could they put me on an earlier flight? I, I said, I've been, I, my wife and I, we, we've been flying for many hours and we're just tired, we want to go home. And that nice lady, she said, looking at my ticket, she said, Mr. Ward said, where are you flying to? And I said, Little Rock, Arkansas. She looked at the screen and said, Mr. Ward, I'm sorry, but there's, all the flights are filled to capacity. There's no way that we can get you on an earlier flight. You just got to stay and wait your turn. 11 hours is the next time you can leave. There's no way that we can accommodate you. I said, lady, look, I've been on this plane for a long time. I'm tired. I want to go home. You can do something. Don't ever, you don't have to take first answer. Uh, you can do something. I, I, I want to go home. I don't want to stay here for no, no I don't want to stay here that long. And uh, she said, I'm sorry, sir, it's just, it's just impossible. I said, what about me? Could I fly to like Atlanta, fly to New Orleans somewhere and then fly back in and be there quicker? She checked it. She said, no, said, there's no way possible. Said that we can't do that. So I just continued pleading my case and just about wore out. She said, Mr. Ward, 
She said, can you see that man over there, over sitting over against that wall? Looked like a bum sitting over against the wall at New York Airport. Had a walking cane. She said, you see that man over there? He's sitting behind a little desk, hardly any bigger than this. Had a little computer on it. She said, if you'll go over there and talk to that man over there, said, if there's any man in New York City that can help you, that man can. And uh, he's he just isolated by himself. He looks like he, all, all he's missing is a, is a Kroger basket. And uh, he looks like he's worn out too. So uh, I walked over to him and, and I stuck my hand out and I said, uh, brother, I said, I started out, brother. I said, my name is Arthur Ward. And uh, this is my wife. We've been in Israel and we've been traveling. I said, I'm so tired, I want to go home. And they're telling me over there one story, but uh, I just wonder he might be able to help me get home a little quicker than 11 hours. He reaches up and grabs the tickets out of my hand. And uh, he types in a few digits on his little computer there, picks up a walkie-talkie, and uh, he, he, calls out, he calls out someone name or something and he calls out some numbers. He says number, 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 number to Little Rock, Arkansas. And they responded with yes, we're loaded and we're ready to pull out. We're ready to leave. He said, hold that plane. I have some special guests that are I have some special guests that are on their way home and they need to be on that plane. Hold it till they get there. Said their names is Ward. It's Arthur and Sandy Sandra Ward. He said, Don't leave without them. They're on their way. He stamped that ticket with a rubber stamp and uh, looked up at me, handed it to me, and said, Have a safe flight home. They're holding the plane for you. Sister Ward and I, we took off running. I told her, I said, we may not be able to sit together, but at least we'll get home together. We reached the gate, and uh, we was all out of breath. And they're standing just outside the, the gate, the door of that plane was another pretty woman. And uh, she looked up at us, and she said, Mr. Ward? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, we've been holding the plane for you. Come on in. We went in the plane. When, just as soon as we stepped inside the plane, that door shut. I thought, oh, boy, we finally, we barely, barely got inside that. We took about four steps. She said, come this way. We followed her. It took about four steps. And uh, she just kind of did her hand like this. She said, these are your seats. And I saw two of the prettiest seats I've ever seen in my life. I mean, we, we never made it to coach. We never made it to the economy section. Like the second row, these seats, big as a recliner, two of them. She says, your friend requests, hey! Your friend requested these seats for you. She said, that's them. Boy, I sat down there. I'm not talking peanuts. <laughs> uh -uh, honey, we ain't talking peanuts. No, sir. And we're not talking Pepsi. <laughs> oh, no, they're bringing out that same stuff they had that other plane. <laughs> Well, I'm telling you the truth now. Some of that stuff, you drink enough of it, every seat becomes first class. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> no, y'all don't. Y'all have a clue what I'm talking about. Y'all been saved all your life. <sighs> I'm just telling you that that we got we got home. That's all I'm going to say. The rest of that ain't none of your business. Thank God, His grace is sufficient. <laughs> all right, everybody look at who's clapping their hands. They're all drunk. So everybody's clapping their hands right now, drunk. The setup. 
Well, that, I, I, just, I just wanted to share that with you because I got, I got two words I want you to carry home with you today. You've got to start thinking this way. Somebody say first class. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. It's not so much what you think, it's as you think. It's not so much the thoughts you have, it's as you put those thoughts in a pattern. I want you to begin to think first class. I want you to know, you can watch the news and, and, and children, children are suing their parents. How do you spell dummy? Children are suing their parents. They're blowing up buildings in Baghdad, hijacking airplanes out of Malaysia. Is that, am I saying that right? Men with men, women with women, children unthankful and unholy, people without natural affection. We're living in a world today where men's hearts are failing them because of fear. We're living in a generation where it seems like the world has forgotten all about God. Men are concerned about the Dow Jones and the stock market, wondering if they're going to be able to hold on to their gold and silver. Wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation, 20,000 troops are in Ukraine today because one nation says, we want your gas and oil and what you have. So it's enough to make you want to go, oh my God, will we ever make it through? Is there hope for any of us? And as I was reflecting on this this past week, I heard two words. Say it with me, first class. Ha! Ah, woo! Hallelujah! Somebody said, somebody says there's nothing you can do about it. You've got to ride along. Uh-uh, honey. I'm telling you, he said, lift up your head for your redemption draws nigh. When you begin to see these things come to pass, know that the end is near. But I've got something I've got to lay on somebody. Some of you know it, but the rest of you don't know it. You don't have to live in that climate. Watch, watch, watch now. I'm telling you right now, world going to hell. And the world is experiencing a lot of hell right now. But for a child of God, you don't have to participate. I declare unto you that you can remain first class. You can, you can soar above it. You don't have to be a part of it. You don't have to subscribe to poverty and sickness and disease. Greater is he that's within you than he that's within the world. He's already purchased your ticket for you to go first class. Somebody said, oh, that's what's going to happen when we all go to heaven. Oh, it'll be there too. But I feel sorry for those who aren't ready. He's going to prepare a place for the prepared. I'm ready. And I'm getting even more, excuse me, readier. I'm getting ready. I'm going. And I'm going first class. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, I'm going to leave this old earth, but I'm leaving first class. Don't look for me behind some, some, some light pole somewhere. Don't look for me down some back alley somewhere. Don't look for me on skid row. Praise God, the church of the living God. We're going from the front row. We're going first class. He's going to know those that belong to him. I'm not leaving here with empty pockets. I don't think you're listening to me. I think you've already gone to sleep. I'm telling you right now. I don't, I'm, he told me, now I don't know about you. You can do what you want to do. 
But I heard my son this morning, even though he's rebellious sometimes, I heard my son say this morning, I'm blessed coming in and I'm blessed going out. Yeah, I'm telling you right now, this ain't none of your business, but I'll just throw it in there for your own, your own good measure stick. When I was born, I weighed 14 pounds. Now you tell me I wasn't blessed. Mama thought I was a curse, but I'm telling you what, I thought I was blessed. When I was born, they said, you look like you're two years old. When I came in, I came in big. Ha! Whoa, glory to God. Somebody, somebody sent me a message this past week, said, could you make a video concerning God has big plans for you? I just sent them a picture of me when I was a baby. Amen. Amen. God has big plans for me. When I came in this world, I want you to know there was already seven more kids ahead of me. Seven kids and mom and daddy and a big, great big family. I said, man, look what God's done. I'm just telling you, God got, it, it, what he said was, he said, I bless you coming in. You interpret the way you want to. I don't know what Bible you got, but he, when I got it, he blessed me coming in. He blessed me going out. Caused me to be the head, not the tail, above only and not beneath. So I'm just telling you, when I leave this world, I'm not going to leave in poverty. Because I am a royal member of the church, the family of God. And for everybody that's been born again, washed in the blood of the Lamb, when we leave this earth, they're going to miss us when we're gone. Them people out there that's trying to get rid of the church and shut us down, they are undoubtedly, am I on TV right now? They are undoubtedly some of the stupidest people in the world. That's right. They're just walking in raw ignorance. They don't have a clue that we are what is holding this thing together. Ah. You take us out. You take us out. You better look out, Jack. You take us out. Here comes the wrath of God. We're the only reason why you can walk around like you walk around today is because the church is still here. And when we're gone, you're going to miss us. Mm. Well, praise God. I just want you to, I just want everybody here. I want you to start thinking first class. First class. Say that out loud. First class. First class. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, glory. Here's to God. Get ready, 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 get ready. My Lord.